Karen. Yes. We've had lots of talented people on the show so far. We sure have. We've had psychics, mediums, channelers, healers of all types, all kinds of people. Mm -hmm. We've even had an animal communicator. Yep. But what if someone didn't just communicate with animals, but was also drawn to paint a picture of the animal's soul as well? Ooh. Yeah. And what if this person could create beautiful abstract art, not just from animals and their souls, but from people as well? Wow. Well, that's exactly what today's guest does. Not only did she communicate with our dog, Hunter, and she'll tell us all about him on the show. Oh, boy. But he also connected psychically with you, Karen. Oh, my God. And happened to draw your soul portrait as well. Really? Uh-huh. Oh, wow. <laughs> We're going to reveal it on this show. Fun times ahead, so don't go anywhere. The Skeptic Metaphysicians starts now. My name is Will. And I'm Karen. And unlike Mulder and Scully, we both want to believe. So we've embarked on a journey of discovery. We've talked to people deeply entrenched in the spiritual and metaphysical world. We've thrown ourselves into weird and wonderful experiences. I even joined a coven of witches. And, wait, you joined a coven? Yep, all in the interest of finding something. Anything. That will prove that there's something beyond this physical. Three-dimensional world we all live in. This is The, the Skeptic, Skeptic Metaphysicians. Metaphysicians. Karen, today's main topic is chock full of information. So rather than try to reinvent the wheel, I'm just going to read an introduction for our guest that was sent to us prior to her coming on. Perfect. Now, it's a little long, so bear with me. Her press release reads, There have always been two sides to Nicole Harp, the creative art side that lives and breathes art, and the spiritual side with a deep connection to nature and animals. While she was... Well, while she has always felt she had, had to shelve her spiritual side, it seemed to emerge on the canvas in organic brush strokes and authentic colors. Nicole is a lifelong artist and educator with a communication arts and design degree from Virginia Commonwealth University. She spent most of her career as an accomplished abstract painter, balancing the functions of text and image in her artwork. Now, both sides have come together to enhance her multifaceted career as an animal communicator. Sessions with Nicole allow healing for her clients, both the animal and their guardians, she provides consultations for all animal species and communicates with animals in spirit as well as living. Nicole validates by revealing personal details and the essence of your animal. This meaningful information authenticates the connection only you share with your animal. She communicates and answers questions regarding personality traits, behavior, health, opinions, likes, dislikes, and much more. And Karen, yes. this is exactly what she's done for us. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited to dive into this. So let's welcome to the show, Nicole Harp. Nicole, thanks for coming on. Hi, thank you, Will and Karen and Hunter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you can't, you probably can't see him. Maybe at some point you'll see him uh, show up in Karen's camera. I can feel him. There he is. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely here. <laughs> so you're going to see him sometimes every once in a while pop in. He definitely did not want to miss this conversation yeah. since he said, hey, you're talking about me. I got to be in the room. <laughs> and he doesn't have to be in the room, actually, which is good. Right. It, it's it's telepathic. So he can yeah. be anywhere and you might not see him looking at you. He might just be still sleeping. Right. Yeah. That's right. We should mention you did this. You connected with him remotely. You've never met him or us or anything like that. And yet you sent us not only first impressions of Hunter, but you also sent first impressions of Karen. Yeah. I get into <laughs> <laughs> right now because it's too much. But let's talk about you, Nicole, animal communicator, but not just an animal communicator. You actually draw portraits of their souls. How did this come about? How did you all of a sudden just felt like, oh, I need to draw this soul on a paint? How does that happen? Well, it kind of morphed into that. So yeah. just a little, little backtrack. Uh, well, but I've always been an art. I've been a professional artist since 1992, but I've always been an artist. I went to VCU, right? Like second best art school, you know, just have to put that out there. It's a oh, great art. <laughs> No, seriously, everything I, did has prepared me for uh, this moment. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like in my life, my love and um, commitment to animals, environment, and nature, in all the projects I've done, uh, I have a, a art site, um, professional art website, but I'm, that shows all my profession, you know, my CV and everything. But if you look at that, it's um, all these projects um, committed to nature and the environment. And I've always asked, what can I do? What more can I do for animals? And um, 
you know, I started with, uh, you know, just as a kid and the rescuing and then went into the shelters and did some development and fundraising. And then uh, I started a business that was all about animals and environment, Eco Dog, sustainable dog watering station, took water from the roofs and filtered it into uh, clean drinking water for animals through natural biofiltration. Okay. So it's like oh, wow. hit, hit on all the things I love, right? Renewables and innovation. I love innovation. Karen, that's you too. Mm-hmm. Thinking oh, yes. about things that have never, never, uh, hey, Hunter, um, that have never happened before. <laughs> that have, yeah. Um, and then, um, you know, I created a project with the zoo and blah, blah, blah. But anyway, I've always asked, what more can I do? I said, there's got to be more I can do for animals. And um, and about three years ago, um, I you know, had a kind of want to say spiritual awakening, but that's when it kind of the eco dog. I was like, this is this is not flowing. And I started doing phys- um, human psychic work intuitive human psychic work Mm -hmm. so i still do human communication but that kind of morphed into animals so will sorry the long-winded version of the answer is uh, i've always been a painter and everybody has energy the um the essence of who you are you can call it whatever you want soul uh you know your essence your true self that energy has colors that it translates into and i interpret those colors so the communication is me connecting to your higher self and your 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 energy Mm. And then um, I translate that. I'm an abstract painter. Always right. have been. So right. I know you said portrait, but it is a portrait, but it's an abstract. Yeah. He's an um, abstract portrait. We should, we should have specified. Yeah. Well, um, what I don't even know what soul look like. I right. <laughs> and what better way to translate the soul though, right? Into color, shapes, and lines. And, um, and maybe so it's it, not abstract. Um, <laughs> and, some of, and, and if you, right. And some of them become more realistic. The, you know, we always want to see things. In the art, don't we? As humans, we always want to, everybody is born, you know, trying to connect. So in, in art, when you're looking at, you always want to find something that you, that you can connect with. Um, uh, and, and hopefully you do in, in my paintings, but the, um, the colors are what resonates. Right. So well, let's, let's take a look at some of them since we've, since she was so okay, great to send us some. If you're only listening oh, wow. to the show, if you want to take a look at the paintings, go to our YouTube page we've got a link on skeptic you can go directly to our youtube page you can see it but this is an example of one of the soul paintings that nicole has done but she sent us a bunch that's that's one here's another one very interesting mm-hmm. very abstract as you can see for mm-hmm. sure and as they go you can tell some of them are more muted in color mm-hmm. other ones have are more vibrant in color well why don't you let her talk about it? well uh, <laughs> he's doing well Good. <laughs> my student you're doing well <laughs> well, is it as interesting, Will, if I were to tell you what they were, because, you know, the goal is to have a show of 200 souls and, you know, show these paintings. But in the book I'm doing, I'm going to have a visual of maybe if Karen says yes, Karen's face and a little blurb from the communication and then the painting on the right. So it is interesting to see. Here's Karen. Here's my translation of her soul. I mean, I feel like you'll see it, you know, you'll feel it. Mm-hmm. But um, they are so different. Yeah, yeah, they really are so totally different. So, it's exciting for me. Go ahead, Karen. Sorry. I used to. I have a Karen, shut art. me up, please. <laughs> no, I love to hear you I'll just keep getting on. <laughs> no, I, I have a degree in art and I used to paint. Why? And, we're, we're, um, excellent. And, yeah. yeah. And um, so sometimes when I was really upset about something, I would sit there and I would just whip out, you know, just like the emotions come out. So, so right. I was wondering. Is that kind of how it feels like to you? Like when you're getting this this vision of the soul, is it something you just have to get out or is it just like a gentle, okay, it's like this? So remember when I said it, like everything's prepared me for this moment, I feel mm-hmm. like everything I've been painting has been for someone. Mm-hmm. And, and and actually and at several points, people who have, who I mean, people have purchased my work through, you know, throughout the, since, like, as, you know, for years. And some people have said, um, like, this is like, they just know they're supposed to have it. And so, but I feel like that's what this is. Like, um, I'm painting, it, it is coming through me. I just have the, the, um, the knowledge from the good school to be able to do it well. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it is coming through me. I'm lucky that way. Uh, it's like the communications. Yeah. I feel mm-hmm. like I have to get it out. Some will come to me and some I'll ask, like I've had the red one you saw. Mm-hmm. As a coworker, and I just like was pulled to this to my table to start writing about her. Beautiful. And I don't want to tell you too much about her, uh, but, sure. but um, but do it, it, it is do she, it, do <laughs> it, and uh, right, and that's what. Well. <laughs> yeah, but she had something traumatic go on in her life, and I was just drawn to this. But um, it's just like you know, I wasn't drawn to this before. I've known her for twenty four years, 
But at this point, I was. And that's where we go back to. I feel like the art is healing. Um, I feel like the communications are about healing. What What is it that um, the soul needs for healing? But how, one, go ahead. You, how large are these paintings? I feel like they need to be huge. Oh, I, I like that whole just the soul just needs to explode out. Like they, I, they need to be I love how you think. <laughs> I love how you think because I want to do ones. I don't know if you know Kehinde Wiley, but his he his his um his uh, kitsch is uh, I love that that his paintings are so large they can only be in a museum, and mm. so like they're huge, right? So you either have to have a really big house and lots of money, or be in a museum. So, but I do see my. I mean, I've always I paint with oil sticks. I've always mm. been like a, and I have energy. I mean, you can probably like you know since I have a lot of energy, mm-hmm. and so especially what? when I'm talking. I know what. <laughs> and, uh, You're pulling teeth. Uh, <laughs> one of the easiest interviews you've ever done. <laughs> yeah. uh, but it's only when I'm talking about my callings, my two oh, callings, course. right? I, but, actually, so if you think about that vertical, um, more vertical one you saw that had um, the yellows, it's a puppy collective. So it's about, it's like in general, not one puppy, but puppies. And I do see people's souls huge. Like this, you know, some just need to be big. These are 20 by 20 because I'm paying for the supplies and it's just art super expensive. Oh, yeah. It's a billion dollar industry. It's super expensive. Um, but they're 20 by 20 on Baroque boards. Mm-hmm. So they're easily shippable and frameable. It's not going to break the bank. Nice. Yeah. Well, let's go back then before we dive into Karen Hunter. Let's go back to the animal communication side of things <laughs> because you connect with them. And based on your impressions, that's where the soul paintings come from. But curious how you connect. Um, is it something where you can connect to any animal at any time, or is there a specific way for you to do that? Yeah. So um, they're all different. Animal communicators are all different. You're just like painters. Everybody's different the way they do it. And, and the only way to do it is to do what's authentic for you. Um, and so I do the first impressions. Um, I need an, uh, I need a name. And then an image. I don't always need a picture, but it is, in, you know, it's a little bit easier. And then I do those first impressions. Um, uh, I just, just, you know, I sit, everybody does it however, but I sit and bring forth that energy. And then just, it's a communication because, um, uh, you know, we're all sentient beings and it's a communication opposed to a reading. Mm-hmm. I'm, um, you know, open, I connect heart to heart. There's a couple of different things. Um I do, you can do when you're walking hunter, but I connect heart to heart and, um, you know, I, I don't feel like I have to, they're all different. Some are like, oh man, I can't wait to talk. Others are like, whoa, what's this? I'm not sure. Others, you know, it really just depends, but I, 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 I I'm just going to say this and I don't, it doesn't sound like, but my, my love for, for animals is so deep. I don't feel like I have to tell them, but I come in, they know I'm just, I love them. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just love them. If I meet people and they have an animal, I go straight to the animal. Mm-hmm. But, and a lot of people are like that, but um, I kind of just, you know, I'm here, I'm friends, you know, your parents' friends, if they're kind of standoffish, introduce myself and I just let it flow. Like mm-hmm. a conversation, hey, we're, you know, I don't ask what they do for a living because you know, <laughs> that's just a shark. <laughs> well, but yeah, just, just interact with them and then I get those first impressions. And if mm-hmm. that sounds like your animal, um, then great. Then we move on with a communic- full communication. But can I do, I, I did it with a gecko family that lives here in our, our, and I live on the water. So I do have lots of fowl and all, and I've communicated with birds and cats and dogs. So you can do it. There's lots of animal communicators who are trying to change the world by connecting with whole species. Mm-hmm. And I have done that in a group collective and it is freaking powerful. It's wow. amazing. Wow. Yeah, it's amazing. And we can change the world by connecting with animals. Um, they're sentient beings. And and I, and I want to say this, Will and Karen, um, we all come from the same source, right? Mm-hmm. You call it whatever you want. God, prana, source. We all, animals and humans all come from the same place. Sure. So, so that, you know, that, that um, living in harmony and, and that relationship, if it can, you know, if it can be understood better, we can live better. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, I, I agree with that 100%. Can you, do you ever communicate with any animals that have passed? Always. Yes. Okay. I mean, yes. Meaning like, um, yes. And it's very healing. Um, sick animals, animals that are coming into a new home. Um, uh, they're, it's interesting because they're all about, well, you know, animals, they live in the present moment, right? Mm-hmm. They're just, um, they're just um, Zen masters. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm super envious. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's what they're here to teach us to be present. 
Oh, so I, I always tell my client, please, by the way, please, just because it's helpful, I think signed on to my newsletter because I send out newsletters that the animals, information the animal gives me to help us on our journey, humans mm-hmm. on our journey. And one of the things they say is like, get down with them three times a day on their level and be present. And you, to close, to get rid of the chattering mind, spend time with your animal one-on-one. It will, it will totally... Exactly. It it will. It, you don't have to try to stop the chattering mind. It'll happen. I mean, I'm on the we, floor under half the day. <laughs> that's good for you, Karen. I love that you've set you set up your life that you can do that. Yeah. yeah. Which is why you're his favorite. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no. it, it's interesting. So the reason I was you're asking about animals in the past is I had a dog for she was almost 16 when she passed. Beautiful, the best dog ever. Oh my God, Kira was just amazing. And it took me about six years to get over her to be willing to get another dog because I was just devastated. She was this Weimaraner Doberman Doberman mix and just perfect, except for she stunk. (laughs) She had allergies to everything. So the day we got Hunter, we got him on Valentine's Day, and which, by the way, was her birthday, which was just a random, you know, plan. Yeah. I was talking with Will and Sienna. I said, oh, I wonder what Kira would think about this and how she would feel. So later that night, I open up Facebook and scrolling, and the, the first memory that pops up is a picture of Kira, just yep. kind of looking at me with a little Giving hat, a thumbs up. up. Yes, yes. I guess she's okay with this. <laughs> she wants she wants you to be happy. Yeah. I mean, when you communicate with them. They're all. It's never about like how oh poor me um passed or whatever. First of all, they're always with you, mm-hmm. and um she was or help orchestrating you um uh, you all adopting Hunter, uh, and she showed you that by you know putting the it's not stuff we're making up it's it's it is working in synchronicity and things just flow like that but they're always about how to ease our grief mm-hmm. when i talk to them and um just like uh like i had a client who was just so devastated she couldn't save her dog it was during covid and the, and her dog sadie said you saved me i mean it took a year for the, that uh animal so abused to to be able to trust humans again and and she's like don't you get that you did save me no. I'm going to start crying. Me me, me, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like shaking. Them. But um, it, it is, it is, um, they're here. What they, it's all about our grief and easing that. And that is, that's that presence. And they're just, I don't, there's no word for them. Yep. Like, no, no, it, it's amazing. amazing. Everyone talks about the, the unconditional love. Every, every time you see them for the first time, mm-hmm. I, I'm upstairs. I come downstairs and as soon as I, he hears me coming downstairs, he stamps at the bottom of the stairs and just, wags his whole body we've only i've i saw you like 12 minutes ago <laughs> brand new moment brand new day yeah ex- loves so the excited. morning oh yeah, my god yeah. good morning are his favorite words oh yeah. yes yeah so well, what, well he's here to teach you to be more present to slow down mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. i got you hunter i'll try to focus on it <laughs> and you know what's crazy is the more you slow down the more you you get things done the more you get done mm. i'm saying that because i i'm saying that for me Everything's for what I can learn, right? So that's, but oh, it yeah. is true. It is true. Yeah. So when you communicate with them, do you, and it could be, it could be very different. Everybody might be different, but is it just a, like a clear cognizant type of thing where you just know, or is it you hear them or do you actually have a, a like a dialogue with them? How does that work? Right. Well, I, people get it all different ways and I do get it all different ways and you can um, practice to your ways. But I, since I'm an artist, I do get lots of drawings, which is the best. And I'm always, you know, I'm never unsure when I get a drawing. It's them showing me mind to mind, image to image. Um, you know, and I'll and I'll and sometimes they'll specify you need to draw this. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, you need to draw this. But um, uh, but I get it um, with just words or an image. Sometimes they'll give me songs. That's awesome. Like tell my parent, you know, tell my guardian this. Give my guardian the song. And um, and it doesn't mean it's that you'll know it. It may be what's for you at the time. Doesn't mean you're like, oh, I that song I knew when I was eight, but you know, it's the words in the song, maybe. But they're always looking for ways to connect to you, and um, and and for you to continue what your gift is, you know, Karen and Will is that uh, interaction with the animals, finding a rescuing. I'm assuming you rescued. We did. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah. Well, before we continue on, we've got to take a quick break. But when we come back, we're going to dive into all of this stuff. But even deeper, and we're going to go into your communication with Hunter and your psychic impression of Karen, and we will reveal Karen's soul portrait. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. Yeah, we're just getting started. Uh, stay with us. We will be right back. Mm-hmm. 
Welcome back to the Skeptic of Physicians. We are talking to Nicole Harp, who's animal communicator, soul painter. And before we left, we were talking about how she communicates with animals. We looked at some of the paintings that she's done over the years that she's been doing this. And we teased the fact that she graciously decided to do one for Karen. She communicated with Karen psychically. And she did send over her initial impressions of Karen. And Karen, do you remember our impression when she first sent that over to us? I do. It's very yeah. Nice you. <laughs> yeah. I remember when I was playing it for us, the two of us, all we were doing was looking at each other going, oh <laughs> my gosh, you had nailed Karen so hardcore. There were some certain things that Karen's like, mm, I'm not sure. And I reminded her of some things. She went, oh my God. <laughs> so <laughs> things that were even hidden from her that you were able to, to call out. Now, is it the same? Do you connect with people the same way that you connect with animals or is that different? It's, I connect the same way. It, okay. I do. Um, they're not like, um, well, um, they, I guess the owners would be the one like Karen and see if you can see, seeing if it resonates. But I may say one thing to that, to that, uh, Will, about with Karen, uh, when it's about you, um, it's like when you're in the doctor's office and you need someone to hear what's going on because when it's about you, you miss a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the same thing when you're getting, when I'm, and it may be things you know, or you don't know, um, or they're kind of so subconscious or, so it is interesting that, that Will is, and I see him do it often in the show, remind you of, uh, but it's so easy to see. It's so easy for Will to see. And that just makes you humble, Karen. It's just sweet. Mm -hmm. It's sweet that you do that because I feel like um, when it is about you, it's hard to, yeah. you know, it's hard to, to, to see it at the time. But to your point, when people keep yeah. reminding her, keep pointing it out to her, you think eventually she'd go, okay, okay, fine. <laughs> well, you know, it is about like what you're calling, right? It's, it's everything is like, I think the woman you had on before that last episode, um, I shouldn't be too many things that are new, but what is awesome, like with animal communication and speaking to Karen's higher self, they do, if you do want new ideas, where should I go for a career? I'm not sure. That's where you can get them. That's what's mm -hmm. fascinating. Hunter will tell me things like, be sure the pile of sticks in the backyard. I think you may have sticks that need to be picked up. Well, he's got a game that can kill, well, not say kill, who can, which can arrive with two things at once. There's a stick game he came up with to bring the sticks and we'll collect the sticks so you don't have to do it. They mm -hmm. give you ideas that are, um, cost nothing that will help make your life and their life better. Oh. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that we've had Karen wait long enough. <laughs> Let's dive into your impressions of her. And then through the course of the conversation, we will reveal the portrait. I won't hit anything. I don't think anything was too personal anyway, Karen, right? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm a crier, just so you okay. know. I'm a different book. You know. I'm a crier. But I don't know if there's anything crying here, cryable, but I did highlight some things. Um, so in the, in the beginning of the communication, I talked about you and Will getting together and kind of your journey together. So just that care was the one you were supposed to be with and walk through this life with the energy pull that pulled you two together. Great thing is you're growing and learning together because, you know, when one grows and the other one doesn't tend to leave someone behind. Mm -hmm. So it's great that you just have this, you know, I'm going to call spiritual awakening, but whatever you call it that you have that you're, I do feel like you're seeing things differently than you did 10 years ago, 20 years ago. And, and, and something to be said about that, like having a spiritual awakening or, or, or like a second um, career, like those people live longer because you're happier and, you know, but for Karen, I, I got this draw, this, this drawing of an octopus, right? Well, they're brilliant too, but, um, you know, this, this arms moving all about and all these tentacles. So the word soul seeker came out and like, um, a visual of an octopus with long outstretched arms and multiple, multiple things like this, you know, that, that. You have all these things that you could do. So you're very analytical. You know, you're smart. And I, I, there's a drawing here of you in front of a, um, a little school desk, right? One of those wooden school desks. You know, so yeah, that's you. And that comes naturally. It's that you, I see you at an old school desk. Karen's writing diligently as she's, as she does everything. Mm. But then there's the creative side of you kind of skipping around. But it's good that you call that out because she's very smart. In fact, she has two degrees and one of them is in anthropology. And the other one is in Art. art right when, so, when one's not enough yeah <laughs> but something i started out in engineering so i've kind of oh my God, all yeah. the classes the college had I took them all <laughs> yeah she loved going to school which is not not me loved it yeah no. oh come on who doesn't love learning uh, were those fulfilling for you i mean did you end up doing something with that uh those degrees or did you not go that route well 
a little bit. Yes and no. So with anthropology, I actually ended up teaching. I taught Spanish and I taught art and I taught anthropology at a prep school for about 10 years. And then from then, I haven't really done much with those. I, I used to paint, you know, I've sold a few paintings, but I just then. It is a tragedy yeah. that she's not still painting. We have an easel right here in this room I that she, I mean, she's, yeah. her, she's super talented, but she's not really done much with the time. Well, you make the time. If that's what you want to do, right? I mean, I, are you doing what you want to do, Karen? I'm doing a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dust the octopus. Yeah. Well, and that's a good thing for like communications to, to kind of help you. Not getting off topic because I'll everything comes back to fruition. I'll come back to this. But sure. years before I started doing this, I had a um, reading from an astrologer that I go to every two years. He's amazing. Uh, he's local. You should totally get a communication from him, whatever he calls it, <laughs> astrology reading. But he said he talked about shamanism, and we're like, ah, ha, ha. My, my partner and I are like, whatever, you know, shamanism, the psychic stuff. And then you know, three years later, um, that's what I end up doing. But back to Karen. Mm. So yeah. really, Karen. Good. I was going to say, when you said the thing about the octopus, I was like, oh, I can hug a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. And I am it, super touchy feely. I touch everybody and like, I have to make myself stop. People don't like that. Me <laughs> too, Karen. Me too. Let's go back to this. <laughs> Let's go back to that. Oh, I got that. Let's go back to that part then about your need to move and dance in your arms and your like that touching. So I see you dancing around with veils, colorful, smiling, needing to dance, feeling all the stuck past emotion and getting unstuck and coming away from your bones and ligaments. Dancing is the healing for you. You should always dance around in place with others and movement, move your body, soul. It's your soul's healing. It's a creative outlet for you. And you know, Karen, if you're not doing one creative outlet that you should, outlet that you should it'll manifest in other ways, right? Cooking, dancing, you'll be creative in other things. You just mentioned two things that she does avidly, cooking and dancing. So they're all <laughs> well, coming then, at one time and all, all of it's coming. And they make fun of me at work because I, I, I'm the floor manager for the show and I'm usually dancing around. With- <laughs> <laughs> dancing, cooking and dancing, cooking and dancing. Catch me, catch me. Yeah. Uh, so, and not to mention you dance beautifully or Will would say profoundly beautiful, <laughs> whatever. I don't quote. Um, I see belly dancing too, like that type of uh, yeah. even more opening up your chakras with the belly dancing. Yeah, yeah. The interesting thing we met right before Halloween, the very first year, she dressed as a belly dancer. A belly dancer. dancer. <laughs> yeah. 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 I can do the lessons. I can do the dance. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. My spouse can belly dance as well. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I just, I just belly. It's a she, so that you don't visualize a man belly dancing, which is nothing <laughs> wrong with that. No worries. Not at all. Not at all. It's just, you know, yeah. it's, cute, it's cute visual, actually, of a man doing it. <laughs> yeah, really. yeah. I mean, you and have hair with like fluid this. hips. You know? yeah. <laughs> and then the other thing is like your supersonic highway to the spirit realm. So if you wanted to do this, you could. And what I mean is, so I'm asking questions like, did you want to study the supernatural or energy or light um, when you were younger? Did you feel this energy early on or did you shelve it? Mm-hmm. So I just had this picture, this drawing. Of you, Keeper Highway. Um, the th- yes to all of those questions. Yeah. Uh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, let me let me stop you for a second because I, th- I think it's important to mention that when you first reached out to us, you mentioned that it was really important you'd not listen to any of our shows or watch any of our shows because you wanted to get a, a clear impression of us, of Karen, without being influenced. So you had yes. not listened to us at all until after we had said, Yes, the impressions are great. Let's schedule on your show. And then that's when you started uh, listening to or watching the show. So, Karen, all of these impressions that she was getting, she was getting prior to knowing you at all, oh. which is the most astounding thing of it all. It really is. It was like a month and a half ago, maybe, or something. Mm-hmm. And then I only I only listened to your show a little bit to see if you were like how you were, like you weren't crazies or, or like extremists. Extremists. I'm like, well. <laughs> I was like, I better like check out what I'm in, what I'm asking to be on. But it's like, okay, they sound normal. They're not normal, you know. And until I listened to just one the other day, and and I was like, well, it's a good thing I've done my communication because, yeah, she did the one on on the names. Oh yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. yeah. yeah that. I have the everything coming out from your spirit realm. That's the angelic realm. That super highway of coming in, coming out. You getting information and then communicating information to others, whether you chose to do that in a artistic way or verbal way so it actually you exist better in that unknown realm karen and then your gift is actually two feet outside of your comfort zone and i can relate to that because you perform better two feet like outside of that comfort zone where it's not the i would say left and right brain because that's been debunked but it's not the analytical where it's been proven but 
you take all your awareness and then you synthesize and use it to something that's innovative and creative. Deep truth and honesty about who you are and opening into what, who and what you will be. Acknowledgement and understanding of who you are and what you are here to share and teach. It's interesting you're a teacher, you taught art, I teach art. Oh, wow. And have for 24 years. So that's phasing out and this is full time phasing in. It's interesting to hear someone talk to you about yourself when they're talking to you about things that you're just starting to become aware of. Uh-huh. It's like, this is a fact, fact, fact. And I'm like, I'm just learning about this. Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> How did you know before I really knew? Right. No, it, it's right. to give us the courage, right? The courage to, yeah. to step into our, um, I don't want to say this word just came up, divine presence. I mean, it's not how I speak, woo-woo. I don't speak what? like, and not that that's woo-woo, but it is the courage like to be yourself and your, you know, to um, be your divine presence. And um, that is the true joy. Yeah, I yeah. love this that world. term, divine presence. And Karen knows exactly why I'm saying that in the way that I'm saying it. Yes, she is an angel. She's an angel among us and she is divine for sure. So, well, Karen, on top of doing first impressions, no like I mentioned, she actually was drawn to paint your soul. So I'm going to now, without further ado, <laughs> if you're all, again, if you're only listening to the show, you're only getting a portion of the information. You should definitely check out our YouTube page. So you can see, here we go. Drum roll. <laughs> Bam. Here is your soul portrait. You'll have it in person. Cause I'll give it to you. And I actually have it behind me too, but you have to like, look at it close here and look at the textures and the lines but yeah I, it's that I've energy gotta, moving I've up gotta show karen here because what you don't see is karen's reaction was an immediate and well, full it, oh, it, karen, it, waterworks galore well some god it's so when i was younger when i was in college that's when i was really kind of getting into all of this and letting myself feel everything before it got shelved and I had this dream. And I used to have a lot of dreams with the same theme, but the one that really stands out in my head, I was this older woman. I guess I'm older now, so maybe that's me. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> and I had taken a group of people to, I mean, the word that just came to me was the veil. To, there was like a wall. I remember this. And, and they were sitting in front of me and I was talking to them. And I was like this wise old woman. And when I saw that painting, that's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose it. Oh, <laughs> Oh that's my a, God. It is. That, yeah. That's what I see. I see the bigger figure and then like the, the three students. That's, that's that was so the true. color. That was the color of the wall. This oh my God. Goodness. <laughs> so this, isn't that interesting? So, like, I'll, and I'm, not, I'm just going to say when that, I feel like, well, okay, this moment was like kind of predestined, supposed to happen. I, yeah. I, that's when I feel like, you know, like, I love that yeah, our souls you met that, validation. I, I love that our I love that our souls are meeting that way. I like yeah. the soul. It's soul to soul. Well, let me tell you what well, but, I was before you go there. One thing yeah, I okay. want to mention about the painting. One more thing is the overall color, the yellow. When Karen meditates, she has from almost the very beginning. She's mentioned that it, she sees a swirl of purple, which is everyone knows is the divine color, and yellow. It's always been those two colors. And Karen, mm-hmm. if you're talking about taking someone to the veil and and the veil was like this, then it would make sense. You know, and it's weird because I've never, I've always just said I was taking to, to this wall. There's this wall, this vibrant wall behind us. And just today I was like, that's the veil. Wow. This is freaking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry about that, Nicole. And I, well, no, I love that we don't have to um, <clears throat> use the labels that we put on things like veil or wall. Like it's a flat wall. There's no, nothing happening. I love mm-hmm. the color can be the communicator because um, great art's great when it's ambiguous, right? And, mm-hmm. and the ambiguity, ambig, amb, ambiguity, ambiguity. <laughs> <laughs> the abra speaks to, speaks <laughs> to <laughs> you. Yeah, yeah rabbit. Um, <laughs> the um, 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 ambiguity speaks to you. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I had to like, in the communication, if I had to like say what the colors meant, um, like white is your awakening, uh, blue is the connection to spirit, Red is your creativity, you know, and that's just, um, you know, it's, it's not that, oh, you don't have a little there. It's no, it's where you're allowing that creative, let it come out. I mean, it's all like, it's all going to that realm that we talked about, the super highway. Your yellow is your gut knowing that you've always had and listened to, whether you know it or not, and your light, and it's why people are drawn to you. 
Yeah. And you, it's undeniable, Karen, if you just this moment. So, you know, it's interesting to, we'll have to follow you and see what you do. I mean, no <laughs> pressure, no pressure, Karen. No. Uh, and no pressure. Yeah. Well, well I'm glad that. Yeah. Glad, it, it, I it hope was, you like it. I'm glad you. Hey, I love it. Thank you. Thank you. My, yeah. my, all my and pleasure. You mentioned earlier on that it, one of these things where when people see their soul openings, it's like, I must have it. I must have it. I think this is definitely, I would say, pretty safe bet to say that Karen <laughs> must have this painting. So we'll have to talk after we stop recording. It's just so weird. I mean, it's, it's so weird. Is it weird or is it like, this? yeah. Well, I mean, I haven't it's, even, it's I hadn't beautiful. thought about that dream in a long time and just instantly saw it. I mean, I haven't, it's been years since I've really thought about that dream. Yeah. But it, I, I remember that dream very vividly. And that's, that's right. And, and it's all the more interesting that you hadn't thought of that dream in yeah. such a long time. And the minute you saw the painting, it was instant. Yeah. It was an instant knowing. That, it makes us wonder what we remember, you know, our subconscious and our conscious and, yeah. and mm. that not, just that it's so much beyond this physical form that yeah. we are just so much more, you know, that, it, the, the, that, that essence of who we are, or who our animal is and, so when you're painting, are you thinking? No, about stuff or are you just no, stuff? no. You, I, you know, honestly, I get when you think, I get myself out of the way. I mean, in communication too, it's just like, um, uh, just get out of your own way. Mm -hmm. And with the paintings, um, so I kind of give myself up to it, and which is wonderful because I spent years torturing myself in the studio. Mm -hmm. right. Cat, um, torturing myself like, oh, you know, asymmetrical balance, um, focal point. You know, rule of thirds, uh, you know, and, um, you know, it, it wasn't enough enough, but I will, um, yeah, I kind of have, um, to, to help myself, it seems like I say spirit because I'm not doing this. It's coming through me. I mean, it's nothing Nicole's doing, but I, again, it ha the, the, the teaching has prepared me, the, the academia has prepared me and, and I do teach this. So not this, but I teach art so that, but, um, I just kind of get out of my own way and I'll ask, you know, I'll just kind of present, I don't know, like sitting in the power, whatever present. And, um, and I paint and I just, first, when I think about your soul, I got an image and I started sketching it out and then uh, the colors just come and I have to trust that it's right. And, uh, if I start thinking and not trusting, that's when I, it's all discombobulated. So now you trust and it just comes out and, yeah. you know, I know, I know paint enough how to move it and I know lines and. I'm not even going to ask you, Karen, how you feel now, because we all can see it very obviously. I'm glad you like it, Karen. Thanks. Or it's, yeah. I'm glad it resonated with you, I should say. Not, you don't have to like it. I mean, but I'm glad it resonated with you. No, I, I would say safely that it certainly <laughs> resonated with her. For oh, sure. God, yes. Yeah. Crazy. Well, now we're almost out of time, but I definitely want to talk about the fact you are working on a book right now, right? A coffee table book. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So I'm working on a, I guess it, depending on how much it costs to print, what, if I get an agent, how thick it'll be. But the goal is to like have a thick coffee table art book. So, you know, two seconds or less, my mom's got dementia and she's in hospice. And mm -hmm. uh, so, sorry. so um, the book, she's from New York City. My mom, born and raised in Manhattan, always supported my art. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she was going to museums stuff when she was a kid, taking the Crosstown bus, you know, East 80 person. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. she's always been a huge supporter of that. And so the book is going to be a dedication to my mom, you know, my uptown girl or whatever, whatever, you know, she'll love that. And I can see it in New York coffee shops and high end bars, but a big cape, uh, coffee table art book with like the painting on one side, maybe square, big painting on one side and then the communication on the other. And it's and, an animal um, communication, right? Uh, talk to animals, about human. I do human, human spiritual guides. I have some that are a uh, person in her spiritual guide, uh, past mm -hmm. animals, past humans, um, right. the client, her son and her grandfather uh right. you know whoever it's it's just soul sure. so whatever souls you know um right. yeah and then i see a show uh down the road like 200 souls cool. and have the big ones um and the small ones together okay. and very very yeah. cool i'm looking for an agent now so if you know anyone please uh, you hear her to hear first if you're an agent <laughs> we got the hookup so mm -hmm. you were nice enough to send us some samples of the book and we're gonna share them here mm -hmm. this is kind of oh, what it you. would look like right this is wolfie and you've got his communication there on the left and you've got his painting on the right hand side. Now this painting got my attention because there's a lot going on here. Yeah. It's interesting to hear the guardians. That was just a little sniglet from his communication because they're about like 30 minutes long or, or, you know, maybe eight, nine pages, but it's interesting. He showed me his teeth, his pearly whites, because he mm -hmm. had 
unhealthy teeth grunt, you know, in, in his lifetime, yeah. but Northern Lights, and that's the title, and that's interesting, his strength and his devotion, yet his, I'm just like looking at it and saying that, but I can't remember what his mother said, it's on my website, but with the way she described the painting was beautiful, I could not describe it any better. So the thing with my mom, I painted her heaven, because with dementia, you can't focus, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, your noises are, 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 are distracting, and so I have the painting above her bed, and so she can see it. And when she does see it and latch on, she just like kind of stays in that space. And I thought, well, later when this is all done, um, when I'm on the other side of this, maybe I will go into a work with hospice and kind of paint, try to go in and with families and paint those. Oh. So the thing is paint their family soul because you can get two kinds of communication. One where I'm reading back to you about your dog, or you can get an animal, a, a painting communication that will stay with you forever. And um, it's just a nice way maybe for them to have their, loved ones with them always. Yeah. 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 Karen, I wonder if she could connect with Kira in the afterlife and mm -hmm. paint something. But before we go quickly, I want to show another sample. This oh. one was Sammy. And this one was very different. The, the colors are very different. The, the way it's all, the shapes is designed very different. So I wanted to make sure I showed this one as well. You know what's crazy is that dog is a terrier. If you know anything about terriers, it's like ball, 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 repeat. <laughs> I mean, the dog is not calm, but he chooses to be for his guardian, for his mother. Um, he chooses to be. There's so many times he could go off the rails and he doesn't. And it's funny that I, I thought his painting would be completely different. Right. Can you ask Hunter to be good for us? <laughs> I, can, I can communicate to Hunter. And that's the thing too. Like if you have certain things, you're like, if he's chewing on things or something or, yeah, or right when, now, when, when we're recording, could you not, whatever. Yeah. I can definitely like check in with him and, and, oh. and we're going to be things gone. that you have. We're going to be gone for two weeks, and I'm just so worried he's going to think he's yep. going to abandon. I will let him know. Okay. Write right this down. Yeah. Stand with a friend of ours. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As long as Hunter gets exercised, Hunter's, yeah. that's most well, animals, but yeah. And yeah, then do you have bones you can leave with him? Not bones, but something to chew a call yeah. or something. To, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to leave all kinds of stuff. Lots of stuff. But yeah, our biggest concern was, hey, we're coming back, right? We, yeah. Because he, he's had such a hard life before us that we can't help but think that he was probably abandoned by people in the past and because of his reaction to us when we got him. Mm -hmm. And he's just settling in now. And it, right. it breaks my heart for him to, for me to think that he's thinking, oh my gosh, I just got this family. They just gave me stability in life and now they're leaving me kind of thing. He's not thinking that. And I'll send you his full communication. I'll do an audio and send it to you. Oh, thank Because you. the one thing you're talking about, he suggested when he first met you all to pet with the backside of your hands, his face. I remember that. Right. Right. So, I don't know if I even told you, did I? Yeah, you did. Okay. Yeah. But I'll, I'll send you his whole communication, but he knows that he's in it to win it. He's in it for you with you, um, your family till the very end. Okay. A long life, a long life together. It, yes. It's a good choice it's, for him. It's where he's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Yes. He's, it's a divine intervention to put him with you for sure. Yeah, he's such a nerd. I think he, he fits in perfectly. Oh my God. And he's really clumsy. It's hilarious. Yeah. So, so right. If it's right he's, in. He's yeah. so <laughs> loving. Yes. Oh my gosh. Such a loving him. He, Will's going to help him with confidence, which he totally needs, you know, because yeah. Will has, has confidence and that's great. Yeah. And that's what, like, he never reacted adversely to me at all, but I think he maybe had a situation with a man or something because he oh, has a couple of times right away when Will's, you know, picked up a broom or something. And that's what communications are good for, especially like um, adopted animals, rescued animals that come in. And, you know, these are the, the challenges that we're having. And then I address those challenges. Mm. And things do get better. Let me ask you, did you notice any better eye contact or loving from him since I communicated with him? You don't have to say yes if you didn't, but. but no, no, I think I did. I, since the first time you communicated with him to this time, I've seen difference throughout that course. Now, right before you came on. So here's a question. He's from Puerto Rico. Do you have to communicate to him in Spanish? <laughs> no, but that's interesting. There's been a couple Puerto, uh, of Puerto dogs from Puerto Rico that I've connected with. That um, there is no barrier. The the, yeah. the salt knows no barrier. <laughs> yeah, or language barrier. All right. Is there anything else that that we haven't touched on? You want to make sure it gets out. Uh, just that it's all about healing, um, whether it's for the animal or the human. And so a little different with my communications. I usually get information because the human and animal are intrinsically connected. I get information for both. I don't have to elaborate on the human part. It's up to them. But it, since it is a bond that relies on each other, it's good for us. It's, I'm always getting what each entity needs for healing. So mm -hmm. um, that and uh, uh, that I, um, 
I guess that's it because I drew a blank. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> cut that part. Um, yep, yeah, it's just a bit healing and growth. And I just want um, animals and humans to live um, as 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 um, emotionally connected as they can, better understanding each other, mm -hmm. um, just for the animal's sake, or for our sake too. But right, well, yeah, that's amazing. We're going to add direct links to all your contactable areas in our show notes. If you go to skepticinvisition.com, go to Nicole's episode page, you'll see all of her information linked directly there. So it'll be super easy for you to access. And if you are just listening and you want to take a look at the paintings that we showed in the book, we will put those on our website as well. So if you go to skepticinvisition.com, you'll see them laid in there in the, in the blog format as well. Nicole, can't tell you enough how much we appreciate everything you've done for us. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so much. And, and, we look and I you. Yeah, thank you. To, look forward to seeing you again really soon because you're local. So we'll definitely get together. Thank you so much. It was, it was an honor. And thank you. I, thank I really you so appreciate much. your time. Yeah. And we, we appreciate yours as well. Okay. Thanks. Well, thanks for coming along on this journey discovery with us. We'd love to continue our conversation with you on our website at skepticmetaphysician.com or on Facebook and Instagram under Skeptic Metaphysician Podcast. If you know someone who would benefit from hearing the messages we're sharing on the show, do them and us a favor and share the show with them. It will help get the word out about us and it may just change someone's life for the better. And if you're listening to this on the radio and you missed something, well, not to worry, all of our shows, including this one, can be found at skepticmetaphysician.com where you can also watch the videos or even send us an email or voicemail directly from the site. We absolutely love feedback and would appreciate hearing from you. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode as much as we have. That's all for now. We'll see you on the next episode of The Skeptic Metaphysicians. Until then, take care. Mm -hmm.